applied with velocity, it will uh, appear in uh, in a different uh, a different uh, voxel. So uh, at at a normal speed, it will appear in um, in uh, after three voxels. So somewhere here. So if you slow down, uh, it will uh, go to around uh, uh, 1.5 uh, uh, um, voxels. So uh, it will be rounded, uh, for example, I'm not sure how they round it, but uh, it will uh, be in either the voxel 2 or voxel 1. So uh, the problem is that uh, when you slow down, the simulation needs the real vex vectors. So the vector uh, the, mag the magnitude of the vectors the sp or the speed is the same as in real time at uh, time scale of one. But it it uh, advanced on those vectors only uh, at the time scale that you set. For example, if you set the time scale at 0 0.5, it will only advance. Uh, uh, at 0.5 of this speed, so it will be in this uh, uh, this uh, um, voxel. So what, what's happened with uh, the particle flow? Is that particle uh, from a fixed follow uh, uh, reads only the the velocity vectors, so it doesn't take count of the uh, time scale. So uh, even if uh, the simulation slows down, uh, slows down, uh, the particles will be updated at the, the simulation speed. Uh, so it will advance. The particle will advance at uh, the fourth, uh, fourth um, voxel. Okay. So to fix this. We will need to animate also the velocity multiplier of the FMFX follow. So the velocity multiplier will uh, uh, do the same uh, as the um, as the internal uh, calculation of the FMFX. So basically, if you have a vector of uh, four voxels with a speed of 4 voxels, uh, if you set the velocity multiplier to 0 0.5, it will only advance to 2, as in, is, as in our uh, simulation with uh, slowdown. So to do this, we need to uh, animate this uh, in the same way, way you animate the, the FUMFX time scale, but uh, for example, a quick way is to just copy the animation, right click and copy animation, then go here and past, uh, paste the animation, copy or instance. You can copy, uh, paste the instance and uh, uh, you can uh, also then change the settings and uh, it will reflect here. But uh, there is a little um, not so um, if you have uh, different uh, rig and uh, you have uh, many settings that you need to uh, constrain to one animation for example like this time scale uh, it will be harder to do this and uh, I recommend you to make a Okay, so let's say copy. Uh, as you can see, they slow down here, and then goes back to normal velocity. So what I re recommend is to create a, um, a point. Mm, sorry, a point. Uh, this point will hold uh, the animation information that we need. So go to, uh, to modify, uh, modifier panel and uh, choose the uh, attribute holder. We will create an attribute, a custom attribute, to hold our animation uh, of time. Uh, so now go to animation and um, pick the 
parameter editor and uh, let's create a simple spinner with uh, the name time scale global g time scale uh, with the default value of one so at the beginning it will be uh, one multiplier uh, the time will be multiplied by one which is real time and let's uh, press add okay we can see the uh, you can see that she's added here so now we can animate it now uh, to rig this um, the film fix and uh, particle flow to this um, spinner we need to go to the uh, to the parameter that we want to, uh, to connect and uh, go to uh, right click and um, show parameter wire dialog now you can see it. Uh, this is parameter wire dialog this is where you can connect some parameters to others from different object or uh, in the same object you can connect the parameters so it's uh, really good for rigs and so on and uh, for example we will select uh, our uh, point modifier object attribute holder custom attribute uh, G time scale. Now we need to, uh, to set that we need uh, the time scale will react to the change of uh, so it will be constrained uh, to the G time scale value. So when you will change the time scale uh, scale value, it will automatically change it in the time scale of the Fumifix. So to connect it, just click. Um, Oh, here is a little uh, problem that may appear. Not a pr really a problem, but uh, uh, it's uh, sometimes difficult to understand what uh, f from which way to what way you, uh, you need to connect. So you might forget. So the way easy uh, easier way to remember this is just uh, you just click uh, try the first one. So uh, uh, the one that you want. To connect, so to drive to be the master one, it will be ed edit editable. So you can edit this. You can see the G time scale is editable, but the time scale is not. So if you press the incorrect one, you, see, you can see that the time scale is master. Uh, you don't want this, so we p uh, pick the first one and uh, click connect. So what uh, this method is uh, good is because uh, if you want, for example, one uh, simulation to to be constrained to the, uh, to your time, but our simulation of the particles to be, for example, two times faster, you can uh, write here the expression that that you need. So uh, it will be connected to the same parameter but with different uh, in different styles uh, so it depends on the expression that you write here for example sinus of uh, g time scales and so on so for this example we only need the uh, the fix the same value so we not uh, write any expression if you uh, change the expression you need to click update if you want to disconnect just click disconnect okay now you can close this and you can see that uh, okay, if you change this to 1.7 you can see that the time scale is now uh, grayed out, you cannot edit it so uh, another problem is with uh, 3ds Max, it doesn't allow you to go back to parameter view dialog so you when you right click you see that it doesn't react so you can open the reaction manager from animation uh, wire parameters wire uh, parameter wire dialog so uh, and you can find your your parameters here now in in red will be colored the parameters which are connected to something and green is the parameters which they are connected okay so now we need to go to the particle flow and for velocity multiplier we'll do the same 
shown parameter view uh, wire dialog. Let's select our G time scale, connect it, and now you can make your animation. Uh, now you can uh, animate. Okay, let's disable. Now you can animate the time scale here. Let's say one here. Auto key, go to frame nine. Set a key frame. Uh, frame chain 0 0.5 and change 0 0.5. Okay, key frame 20 key frame. We'll go back to 1. When we want here, for example, to go to 2. Okay, to speed it up, up. Okay, so this is the animation. So we need to animate the time scale before the simulating with FimFX. Uh, and about the object, uh, the object you need to animate uh, it uh, by hand or how you animate it with uh, motion capture or something else or audio audio f um, controller. So uh, you need to um, if you animate it by hand, you need to make this slow down by yourself. If you're using uh, some controllers like audio controller, you can uh, you must have there some uh, multiplica uh, multiplication. Uh, I'm not sure about, but uh, I think it's it have some uh, multiplication parameter like say audio float and uh, okay so you, you see that she each have the max value if you use this for example the value of uh, of um, of this uh, to drive the speed of the sphere so for example you made the part animation and so on uh, you can uh, rig this so connect to the point uh, global uh, global time scale attribute and uh, when you animate it will uh, scale your uh, range value range to, to conform the time scale that you you select okay so uh, So this is how you connect the audio controller. For motion controller, it's the same manual. Manually, you need to slow down. If you already uh, done, your, uh, done your animation, you can scale it by hand, like so, or in track view, or in curve editor uh, track view, and you can select the, here, use scale keys, and so on. So uh, that's all. You can just go and simulate your FMFX animation, uh, simulation, and see. Okay, now it will, it will go to two, and back to one. Okay, stop. Now you can see the uh, velocity will be automatically adjusted. To the particle, to the particle flow. Okay, so basically, slow down, goes quicker, and so on. Okay, you can also delete the out of grid particles. So, something like this. Now this is all. Thank you, and goodbye.